Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Albert Potato, and here we check out the latest and the greatest strategy games each and every day of the week. 2023 is officially done, and over the last few weeks, I have been recapping the very best strategy games that I've played across a bunch of strategy sub-genres. Automation games, management games, base builders, city builders, tycoon games, upgrade games, and mining games. I've played a lot of games this year, and I've tried my best to summarize the best ones in any given category to you. You can check out all of those videos linked in the top of the description. In every video, I break down the 10 best games in any given category, and I gotta say, it's not all about the big games. I play so many indie games, and oftentimes, they're as good, if not better, than their AAA counterparts. In this video, I'm giving you my top 10 games in reverse order, revealing the best game of the year last. Keep in mind, this is not an exhaustive list. There's been many other great strategy games that have released this year, so I'd love to hear from you in the comments, what was your favorite game uh, that you have played this year? Right, enough chit chat, let's get to number 10. Coming in at number 10, we have Tectonica. Tectonica is a first-person factory automation game set beneath the surface of an alien planet. Work alone or in co-op to build factories, gather resources, research new technologies, mold the destructible terrain, establish a base of operations, and uncover long-forgotten secrets. This is such a great game, and I think the best way to frame it is basically that it's an underground satisfactory. It's got a lot going for it. Great automation and satisfying chunky buildings. Great dirt moving mechanic and digging stuff to do too. Uh, there's so much to automate and there's a great world to explore. Tunnel your way to massive ore deposits, research rich facilities and hidden caves to find rewards and scan aging artifacts. You'll unlock new recipes for enhanced automation systems and even more powerful technology. Big factories, deep underground. Seriously, what is not to love here? What elevates this game to top 10 status? I'll tell you, this game hit early access in July of uh, 2023, and since then it has continued to receive chunky updates that change the way that the game is played and add a bunch of new content. Whilst you can never be certain that a game in early access will continue to receive any updates, Tectonica looks like it has a very bright future indeed. Moving on to number 9, we've got Against the Storm. Against the Storm is a hardcore roguelike city builder where you must rebuild civilization in the face of apocalyptic rains, as the Queen's Viceroy lead humans, beavers, lizards, foxes, and harpies to reclaim the wilderness and secure a future for civilization's last survivors. What really sets Against the Storm apart from other city builders is that you're not only building one city, you build many over the course of a playthrough, and they can all trade with each other and contribute bonuses and resources to sort of a grand citadel thing in the center of the map. Um, another thing, there's so many modifiers and alterations that can be made to any given run that you're pretty much guaranteed that no two cities are going to be the same. You'll get hours and hours of enjoyment from this title. This is a very good game that I'm certain will get a sequel at some point. Moving on to number eight. That's right, ladies and gents. It is Bee Island, the game about hopping into an anti-aircraft cannon to shoot down ladybirds and other insects made it into my top 10. What on earth is going on? Well, firstly, if you haven't heard of this game, where have you been? You should check out my video linked up in the top right hand corner, uh, because this is just such a wild game uh, and it came out of nowhere and it just completely slaps. Uh, it's truly an indie game and it truly absolutely slaps. Uh, this game is at heart a factory builder or perhaps a base builder, and you basically have to build up a hive and defend it against waves of evil bugs. Uh, it is just absolutely wild. It came out of nowhere. I have no idea uh, that I needed it before I played it. It's kind of goofy. The B2B combat um, is, is weird. Um, and there are also like nuclear weapons uh, that you can build in a B factory builder. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on. But this game is absolutely great. And it's so weird that it deserves a place on this list. This is absolutely a 10 out of 10 recommendation from me. I've said it before and I'll say it again, if I had to rank early access games with the most potential, I think it's safe to say that Mistword would come near the top of that list. Mistword is a survival city builder set on a mysterious island enshrouded in a poisonous mist. Create light sources to keep the mist at bay, build houses and command humans to gather resources. Explore the island and find a way out. This game is basically an automation game plus a city builder. 
all the while, you need to make sure that the mist never touches you. It's not necessarily a stressful experience, but keeping the mist at bay is absolutely something that you constantly just need to allocate a little bit of uh, brain power to. Uh, it's actually another game that I think people are really sleeping on. Um, I can only hope that it gets a bit of a boost over the course of early access because it really deserves it. This is a great game, and I know the developers behind it are capable of uh, creating truly great stuff, and I really hope Mistward makes it there. Number six. Do I really need to explain this one? It is Oxygen not included, but the setting is a magic school. Literally published by the same publisher, Clay, uh, so you know there's going to be an absurdly high expectation of quality, uh, but Mind Over Magic came out on the 14th of December and has already cruised onto this list and a bunch of my other ones. That really is saying something. Mind Over Magic is a magic school management game where you have to design, build, and manage your magic school and explore what lies below in the understudy. Study Lost Arcana, grow exotic plants, brew potions, and raise undead servants. Only you can prepare your fragile students to harness their mind over magic. Uh, this game is so much more than just a straight management game. Building your school is great fun, and making sure that you've got all of the right rooms to train up your students is a great challenge. Uh, you get to set up your students for success by giving them different wands, leveling up different skills and attributes, and choosing how they graduate. Everything plays really well, and there's a bunch of replayability, uh, which is ex especially impressive given that this game is in early access. I absolutely, absolutely recommend this one. I've talked about SteamWorld Build so much over the course of the last few videos because I really do think it's that good. So good, in fact, that it's number five on my list of best games of 2023. Why is it that good? Well, uh, because you get to mine and build a city at the same time in the same game. At the heart of it, you need to ensure that your population always has the niceties they need to survive and thrive. This involves placing all your production and distribution facilities in an organized fashion and making sure you're balancing all the resources that you need to thrive. Uh, that's one of the games. The other game is set below ground where you have to excavate a bunch of dirt and resources to feed your operation above ground. It's such a weird combination of a bunch of genres. It really works. It really, really does. The end goal is to try and excavate a bunch of rocket parts and build a way off the planet. Uh, it's just a great example of what I think is a very competent and a very fluid city builder and so much more. Uh, I really like this one. Released at the start of December into full release and I just can't get enough of it. We are getting serious now as we move into the top four. And I'm going to cheat a little bit because you know what? This is my gosh darn list and I can do what I want to do. I'm putting two games in this slot. Why, I hear you ask? I'll tell you. The latter game only came out after I'd done most of my recap videos, but is such a banger that it warrants inclusion on this list. My two games in position number four are Mining Mechs and the Norp Analog, I think that's how you say it, two excellent, uh, truly excellent incremental games that are real standouts in the genre, and the fact that they both, both released pretty recently uh, is remarkable. Both offer substantial, meaty progression, both are pretty inexpensive and will give you great value for money. Uh, there are differences, obviously, in mining mechs. You have to upgrade your mech and dig as deep as you can. Obviously, there's a bunch of limitations when you're doing this. You need to upgrade your drill, upgrade your fuel, upgrade your storage, etc. In the, 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 the NORP analog, I still can't say it very well, uh, everything happens on the surface and it's a much more sort of straightforward incremental upgrade game in a sense. The coolest thing about the NORP analog uh, is apart from the great little characters that you can uh, that you can order around, uh, is that you can customize how you play the game. What meta upgrades will you prioritize? How are you going to build out any given run? The premise is quite simple. You're trying to destroy a rock. I know, it's crazy. Uh, both of these games um, just absolutely scratch a very hard to reach itch of mine, and I love them both. There are two, these are two great games, and you honestly can't go wrong if you pick up one or the other, or indeed both. Drum roll, please. My third favorite game that released in 2023 is Desynced. Desynced is a sci-fi strategy game with fully customizable units and behaviors. Gather, build, research, and explore the unknown, alone or with friends. Unveil the mystery of an AI on the edge of self-awareness and uncover the hidden truth in this blend of strategy, automation, 
and exploration. Uh, this game is like no other factory builder that I have ever played. Its uniqueness and customizability makes it stand out amongst a sea of competitors that are oftentimes quite samey or trying to replicate the genre classics, you know, think Factorio. It's pretty bold to not have conveyor belts in your automation game, but this game pulls it off and it pulls it off with style. It's modular, it's multiplayer if you want it to be, and it's a legitimately excellent factory building game that just treads its own path. It's truly a 10 out of 10 in my books, and it well deserves to be right up here on my list. This is a great game that you should really check out if you haven't already. In position number two, we've got my favorite automation game of the year. I would stress that this is my favorite game that has released this year, either into early access or into full release. This isn't my favorite automation game of all time, good or indeed great though it may be. This is Infraspace, a city builder and an automation game and a transportation game all rolled into one. Uh, in this game, there's also no conveyor belts. Everything is moved by truck. So instead of optimizing for efficiency, you've kind of got to ensure that you've got a solid road network with no traffic jams. And you're gonna create a lot of traffic jams over the course of any given game. I love how this game weaves all the sort of different genres that I love into a single game. There are other modes of transportation too. You can build trains, about a billion types of factories and mines a whole bunch of stuff. This is a great automation game, and I'm very excited to see what the developer does next. Another 10 out of 10 recommendation from Old Potato. Now, before we get to my pick for best strategy game of the year, we've got a few honorable mentions. But honestly, if you haven't yet seen my other videos recapping, you know, top 10 games and a bunch of uh, strategy sub genres, then you should go and watch them. They're all in a playlist down below, and there's all the information that you need in the description of each and every video to get you to the game as quickly as possible. Right, let's quickly go through the honorable mentions that I really enjoyed over the course of 2023. Dot Age is a turn-based city builder with some dark omens. It's very nice, very indie, very cool, like it a lot. Micro Civilization, an incremental style city builder crossed with a civilization type style grand strategy game. Uh, another great little game. And One Military Camp, a base builder where you play as the last bastion of defense against an evil world. It's all about building, you guessed it, a military camp. I've also played some great demos this year, two that I'm going to flag to you right now as they are so exceptional that they deserve uh, mentioning. The first is Trackline Express, a mad train builder where you have to move your train to the next station. Uh, truly, it's mad. Go and check out my video on it because it is a game like no other. The second demo that I want to highlight uh, is Snacktorio, a glorious pun-filled factory builder where you have to build a food factory uh, to keep planet-eating beasts at bay. Um, this is a fantastic demo. Um, it's a great sign of things to come. I can't wait to play this one when it comes out. Right, enough of the preamble. It is time to reveal what I think is the best game that has come out this year. My best game of 2023 is Thronefall. Thronefall is an early access title and it's already garnered over 8,700 positive reviews. It's overwhelmingly positively reviewed on Steam and I can understand why because this is a truly excellent game. If you've somehow missed this one, I'll summarize why it's so darned great. This is a minimalist city slash castle and base builder. During the day, you've got to build up a city, build fields, walls, towers, barracks, and loads more. And at night, you've got to defend your little slice of heaven from evil forces. This game is so great, partly because it's very simple to play and get your head around, but so challenging to master. And as every time you build a new castle, you've got the opportunity to play through with different, more challenging modifiers. The game is simple to learn, but hard to master. It's also cheap, dirt cheap. You can pick this one up uh, right now, linked down in the description below. Thronefall is the finest game that I have played this year in a year of honestly fantastic, fantastic games. I absolutely love it. I would absolutely recommend that you check it out. It will give you hours of enjoyment. Uh, it is a great, great game. A worthy number one uh, on my list of 10 best strategy games of 2023. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. 
What are your thoughts on my list? Please do let me know in the comments down below. And whilst I have you here, let me level with you for a minute. Um, it has been an absolutely mad year. I have absolutely pushed myself harder than ever before over the course of the last month to make a bunch of these videos. Uh, I think it's been worth it because the feedback has been tremendously positive and I've loved making them. You know, seven slash eight, this being the eighth, uh, videos may not seem like a lot, but over, you know, 2,500 words a piece, that's almost 25,000 words, not including uh, this video. Uh, all of the writing is done by me, all of the editing, thumbnails, on-screen graphics, so each video is hours and hours and hours of work on top of my, uh, my regular daytime job. This is all to say it is a huge privilege to make videos, and it's a huge privilege that you're here watching. Uh, thank you for all the nice comments on the video. Uh, videos expect slightly fewer videos in January uh, as I take it easier to rest and recuperate from a very, very mad and very, very busy December. Uh, thank you as ever for the support. It really is incredible that I get to bring you information and shape opinion in even a small way about a genre of games that I know we all care so much about. I wish you and your family a very happy and healthy new year, and I'll see you in 2024, where, as ever, I'll be covering some more excellent strategy games each and every day of the week. Have a good one, folks. Bye.